Hi everyone. Ever had trouble finding what you want when shopping online? Today, we are going to fix that problem. We will use two cool tools called TypeSense and Flutter to make searching for products super easy and fast. Let's talk about a common problem. Imagine you have built an online store, but the search doesn't work well. When people type blue shirt, they might get results for blue cheese or random shirts. Not good, right? So we need a search that is really fast, understands what people are looking for, can sort and filter products easily and doesn't need a super expensive computer to run. Sounds tough, but don't worry. We have got a great solution. Meet TypeSense. It's like a super smart helper for your online store. And not just for an online store, you can pretty much make your own Google search. So why is it so great? First of all, it's free and open for anyone to use and change. Second, it's very fast and finding things. Third, it's easy for developers to use, which we will see. And it has lots of helpful features like understanding misspelled words, right? So basically, it's perfect for making your online store search work really well. So now we are going to use TypeSense with another tool called Flutter. And you might be familiar if you are watching my channel, right? So Flutter will help us making this app look good on phones, tablets, computers, wherever you want to use it. And let's say we will integrate it with TypeSense, which will probably give us the result what we are looking for, which is making the search, which is both smart and pretty. So let's get started. So first of all, we will be setting up TypeSense. You'll find the link in the description. It's an open source framework here. You can try it out by, let's say we write a recipe called pizza and you see the search result. This is how it works. It's a very good open source alternative to Algolia. I personally feel Algolia is very expensive, by the way. And this is being used by many companies like Code Academy, Logitech, Eleven Labs. Also, a good part is that you can use it with pretty much any favorite programming language like JavaScript, Python. For the sake of this tutorial, we will be using Dart because we are making a Flutter app application now you have two choice either you can deploy it yourself because it's open source or you can deploy on TypeSense cloud I will be using this so let's click here now you have two option either you can sign up with email or you can sign up with github what I did I signed up with github as a coder uh, I feel github is good and now you can see I have an account over here now what I can do I can click on my account and it shows all the clusters I have so what you have to do you have to create a new cluster so you can click here you can give it a specific memory uh, you can set all the pretty much like things like the region type sense version you want to use uh, per node how much uh, CPU you want to use so all these things are there and now now we can click on this launch button and once you have that your cluster is being provisioned and this will also give you a way to generate API keys this API key is important so that your application to can talk to type sense cloud so this is something which you have to do and uh, it will take like few minutes to get your cluster ready and once your cluster is ready you can start writing your collections now as you can see our cluster is ready to use now first of all you should click on this generate api keys and it will generate a text file for you where you will find your api keys this is your node url and you can see that it is in service healthy all the things here you find all the metrics and the first thing which you would want to do now you can find your collections over here or you can create a new collection you can do some configuration if you want so let's create a new collection here you have to provide a schema uh, which you will use for this collection so for example let's say i am making a schema for products for example this is for companies so i will just i have some schema which i am going to paste here so the schema name is products it has fields like id name description price category brand rating in stock or not and uh, there is for some fields i have just specified the type which is string float or boolean and for some we have a facet property which is true by default and we have another field which is called default sorting field which is based on rating now i can click on this create collection button now to create this collection you can also do it programmatically for example dart library gives you an option to create this collection yourself so this is that is another option which you can use now we have created this collection so let's go to collections now here we see products and the document count is zero because we haven't made any entry on it yet so let's go to now flutter and see how how we can integrate it with our flutter application now we will be creating the flutter application so here i'm using vs code and i'm assuming you have the flutter setup installed so let's press command shift p if you are using mac flutter new project application and uh, we can choose a folder 
and we can name it let's say type sense demo and it will have some pre-built uh, counter application um, I just want to get rid of it so I'll just get rid of this comments and then this entire home page also is something which I don't want so just uh, remove this part now it's a blank flutter application and we are doing everything from the scratch so now what i want to do in the pubspec.yml i want to add couple of dependencies the first dependencies which i want is let's say type sense so this is the official package of type sense it is pure dart package so it the version is 0.5.1 second one i want is provider and third one I want to add is cached network image just in case if we need it. So now we have all these three packages. Uh, these are the external ones which we have added. Now once you are done with that, then you can create in the lib folder, you can create a new file called typesense client dot dot. So here you can see we have a class typesense client. It returns an instance and if the instance is not there it creates that client so here you have to provide a configuration which is your api key and the node so if you remember in the previous step we downloaded a uh, api text file which is basically we got from the portal itself so we will open that and we will find an admin api key from there and we will paste it here the second thing is also the nodes which we will find in the same text file or you can also get it from the portal. You have to replace this one with that. And port is also 443 which is again specified in the uh, text file as well. So now what we want, we have to uh, create a new product file. So product dot dot, it's a model file. It should match our schema which we had, right? If you remember. So we will create the similar schema here, which has ID, name, description, price, category, brand, rating, in stock, and things like that, right? Once you have all these things, then you have to make a search provider, basically, which will do the searching for you and get the things for you. So let's say we create a new file, search provider dot dart. This is an interesting file because most of our logic will be here. So we will be creating a new class search provider which will extend change notifier so that because we are using provider for our needs so we need the support for that okay and that means we will have to import either the material package or anything which you want to do right now we need some of the fields for our job so let's initialize some of the fields so first of all we have a list of products and uh, how i can do it i'll have to import it so i'll just import this product so we have some products right and then we have some facets and then there is a, just a way of getting and setting it and then we have a query which we can get our set and then we have some selected facet and by default we will be sorting by rating so we can specify uh, by default sort by is rating in the descending order so we have to create a function which can search for us right based on a query it will do the searching for us right so what we are going to do we are going to write this function which is basically just doing searching for us right so here you can see it takes a query parameter you can provide some facet filters here and sort by mechanism right what is happening exactly here let's see so first of all we are setting the query selected facet and sort by we are having this search parameters which is q for query query by where we have specified name description category and brand facet category brand and rating sort by the sort by and to want to display 10 items then 10 20 items then 20 and then if selected facet is not empty then when you are doing uh, filtration then you can say filter by and then you can pass the entry by key and value and then the search result you will get when you will use the instant dot collection you will specify the schema name or the collection name which is products and then documents and then you will search along with the search parameters and then once you get the results so basically there you will find something called hits so this json object will give you the product so hits inside hits you will find a document which will have all your documents right and then what you can do is using this products or the search result you can fill your facets as well 
uh, facet can be categories, let's say brands, which you want to fill that what kind of brands are there so that you can apply some filters on it. And then at the end, you will just say notify listeners so that your UI can be updated, right? There is one more thing which I want to add that is update facet filter. So we can have an update facet filter as well if we want to update the facet filter. And also when we want to update the sort by, we can have a similar method for sort by where we will set the sort by with a new sort by. Okay. So this is all you have to do. This is a pretty good and easy way to do it. And um, again, I just don't want to make it more complex. So I'm trying to give you the uh, easiest way how you can write these things right now. We will come back to the final thing, which is our search screen. So we will create a search screen search search screen dot dot. Now here it can be a normal stateless widget, let's say, where we can just call it a search screen, which will have let's say, so here you can see we have a scaffold with an app bar which says product is screen. It has a color yellow, it has a search bar and in the expanded column, we have two things one is for filters and one is to show the results. Okay, so first of all, we need this search bar, which we don't have right now. So how we can get it, we can get it very easily. We can get it by creating a new stateless widget. Again, I am writing in the same file, but you can write in the separate file. So now we have the search bar search bar is basically another stateless widget and we have the search provider here. If you are not familiar with the provider package, you can use anything else as well. So provider dot of search provider and basically it will listen to everything, whatever changes are there. And in the search field, we have just a text field which says search products. And then we have an icon of search and not much like on change. What we do, we use the search provider to call the search method. This search method is the one which we have made to search any product. Okay. Now in the search screen, what, what we can do is we can have the facet filters, okay, like facet filter. And second thing we need is search results. So for facet filter, again, we can create a new stateless widget. So here we go. So this is our new uh, stateless widget where we have, let's say, I will just close this. So here we have a list view where we have a build facet section where we will be doing filters for category. We will be doing filters for brand and the last one is build sort by section where we just want to sort by either price or rating. Okay. So again, once you go familiar uh, with this code, you will find what is happening, how it is happening. So for the build facet section, what we will do, we will have another widget, which will be build facet section, which will be an expansion tile and the facet name. And then you'll pass the search provider here. Okay. And now once you have all of these, then you have to do the same for the sort section as well, which we don't have. This is basically a checkbox and uh, based on like uh, selection of this checkbox, you can call the update facet filter, which is the second function which we created in the search provider. And third one is for updating the sort by for that we will write another widget, which is build sort by section where we have another text sort by these are like just normal widget writing. And then you can call search provider that dot updated update sort by and uh, then you can get rid of this as well. Now, once you have all these things, you need a search results mechanism, right? You can use a grid view basically for that. So we will create a new stateless widget search results. And here you can see we have a grid view dot builder and based on this search provider dot products, which is again defined in the search provider, we will be displaying a product card. Now the product card is also not there. So what we will do, we will create a new stateless widget, which will be displaying a product card. So now this is our uh, new product card. We will have to import product now. So product card takes a product and based on the product properties, it displays the results like a network image. This is a placeholder image taken from free pick. You can use or change it by your choice, right? And then you have details like product name, product brand, product price and product star, like how many stars or rating it has uh, been given. So product dot rating. Okay. So this is all you have to create. And now what we can do in main dot dot, what we can do is we can wrap our material app with a new widget. So change notifier provider and it is expecting a create 
parameter where we can pass the search provider. That's all you have to do. Now in the home section of this, which we eliminated earlier, we can pass the search screen. And we should be good to go now. Yes, let's import it as well. And once you have all of these things ready, you can run the app and see the result. This is how our UI looks like. And as you can see, we don't have any product right now. So it does not display anything. Category is blank, brand is blank, sort by is blank. So here you can, if you see our products collection is empty as well. This has nothing at all. If you want to add a document, you have few ways you can add it. Either you can add it with JSON um, or you can use uh, CSV or you can manually add. So manually would be difficult. So I have prepared a JSON for you. So we will create a demo or not demo. Let's call it documents.json. Right. So um, this type sense expects JSON L, which is JSON lines. So here we can have this JSON and then we can do a conversion. Right. So right now you can see I have almost 40 plus uh, random products here where we have some product ID, some random name, some price, some category, some brand, some rating and whether it is in stock or not. Right. And you can apply filters based on it. Now how I can insert this thing inside our collection. Right. So what we can do is from the terminal. Let's open the terminal and uh, let's go to terminal. Uh, first of all, you have to install JQ so that you can convert this JSON to an L. And here also you can see the same thing. We have a command over here which can do the same for us. So let's I have the JQ installed or you can install from brew. So this is what you have to write. And now I'll press enter. And as you can see, we have a document dot JSON L as well. So this is all you have to do. Now you have to export your key. So I'll go back to my uh, type sense client. This is the key I have. So what I can do, I can uh, use this line. Let's say export this particular key and I can write here. Oh, this should be the place. And once I write here, I can pass the key. And guys, this is a request. Don't use my key. You can create your own. And now I have exported the key. Now I have to use this curl to just directly upload this JSON. So upload this JSON means that it will fill all the data. So now I have the curl and I hit create and it says success true, true, true. So for all the item, it is saying success true. So now if I go back to my collection, so ideally it should show me all the products and you can see document count is 40 now, right? So we inserted almost 40, 42 collection uh, like items into this collection. And here, if you will click, you can find all these items, right? But what is happening is that we are not seeing anything on the screen yet. So for that, what we can do, we will go to the search screen and uh, we can create or we can make this a stateful widget. And what we will do in the init state of it, we can basically uh, search without any query so that we get all of the products, mostly like for like if we want to display 20 products, then we have already specified in the search provider, which is uh, 20. So this is what we want. So first of all, what we need is we have to use the search provider. So we have the search provider and from here we can say search provider dot search. And now if I do a hot restart and you can see all the products are here and these are the 20 products. If you want to change the number of products here, you can change it as well. So now we have all these things. Now we can search for something. Let's say we want to search for device 41. So we can say device and all the device entries are still there. Let's say I search for 41, then only I see 41. Okay. And if I just, and even if I, let's say I do some typo also, let's say I say device, then also you can see it is still showing me the result. And this is the power of it, right? Also, if you see, now we are, if we click on sort by, then we are uh, sorting by rating. If let's say we do it by price, then you can see the sorting has changed from price, like which is lower to higher. So six, 11 and things like that is there. It's 26, 30. And if we do it by rating, then you can see five star, 4.9, 4.9, 4.8. And now also if you 
scroll a little bit here then we have the brand filter as well we can click on let's say brand b and only brand b items would be here and similarly we can click on category and let's say select sports then what we see is only sports items right so this is pretty cool and uh, this is how you can apply these filters and you can see how powerful these filters are how powerful is the search result and you don't do much over here now because we have done something over it let's go back to our cluster and here you can see the metrics that it is being used we have used 211 and we also see a graph over here search metrics over here all the things are here network usage and all which is pretty good and there you have it we have made online shopping search much better your customers will think your app can read minds to be honest anyway remember good search makes customer happy right now you can make your own online store search awesome too right so please try it out try it type sense try flutter and let me know in the comments how you feel about it if you like this video don't forget to press the like button also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not the subscriber already and there is the link in the description which can directly take you type sense as well as flutter so thanks for watching